Every now and then, we are fortunate enough to fish a venue you normally would only dream about. Lovely little common. They call me the common catcher. I'm completely blown away by this venue and feel privileged to be given permission to fish it. Mega scaly one. Pucker condition as well. In between the dense drifting islands of weed lurk some of the scaliest, gnarliest looking carp I've ever seen photos of. God knows how old this thing is, it looks ancient. Proper old English carp that date back to the 1980s, just how we like them. Finally one of the proper mirrors has turned up. This prehistoric looking estate lake, tucked away in the deepest, darkest Hampshire, is about as good as it gets. Get in. So join me and good friend Matt as we target the scaly inhabitants of this forgotten paradise in a session I can only describe as, well, just watch the video. Day one of our estate lake adventure was spent looking for likely areas and mostly just taking in the atmosphere of the place. Although we couldn't resist a few hours float fishing, the carp seemed well up for it with a couple of wild looking comments to open up our account. The solar cameras joined us the following morning and this is when the real quest began. So me and Jake Hansen had a walk around the whole lake. We found a few fish milling around at the bottom end of the lake on the surface. So we're quickly gonna quickly go around there, fire out a few mixers and hopefully have a quick bite or two. Two, three hours around in this bay trying to catch one off the surface. There's been the odd fish come in and out and take a few mixes, but the conditions ain't quite right. Um, they're, they're a bit cagey. We've had a bit of rain as well while we're try trying to surface fish. That never helps. So yeah, gonna give it another 20, 30 minutes, then go back around to the swim I was fishing uh, last night around the bay. And uh, yeah, think about getting some bottom bait rods out. I baited it all up just before we come around there this morning. So the spot should be prime. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed we get one in the next 20-30 minutes, but it looks very unlikely, so I think the next chance is going to be back in the uh, swimmer base camp is set up and uh, nab one off the bottom. At the minute it's not going very well in the other spot, way less fish than there was yesterday, there's only about three or four taking the odd one. I've just seen one here cruising about, put a few floaters out, it's taken a few, hopefully gets back, put a few more out, hopefully get, goes back there. And there he is just there, look. Hopefully he takes me up, mate. But it's very hard going at the minute. I think, give it another 20 odd minutes and we'll get solid bagged out under that tree. So, at the minute, surface fishing is a no-go. There is still a few fish under that snag, so I'm just gonna whack out a little solid bag, see if I can get a quick bite. Clipped up, all ready to go. Nice little pineapple wafter, three and a half ounce lead, nailage. Just turned me back around to have a look at that spot over there. All over the Hit and hold fish into them snags. There we go. Gosh. There we go. Finally, one slipped up. Wild looking things, man. Proper little creatures. Hopefully we get a few of the scalies coming in soon. 
and there'll be a right result of a trip. Get this one back, lovely little fish. Alright, so nothing's happened for the last hour after having two little commons. Time for a little break, have a bit of lunch, put some bait in and get come back later and hopefully have one before dusk. After seeing Matt land another wild common, on the way back to our evening swims we found Big Rob who had popped down for a few hours. He was cradling one of the lake's jewels, a stunning apple sized mirror, one I'd seen pictures of previously. And what a creature it was. So I've rested uh, the swim all day. Just come back. There's a few fish in the area, but there's not there's not nothing to write home about. But there's a few fish milling about. I've uh, popped back to the swim three or four times a day, just putting in half a kilo of club mix on each spot, just keeping the bait there is um, full of bait. And uh, yeah, the idea being obviously they keep visiting the areas, become comfortable feeding in them areas. And when I put the rods out at night, we should get some uh, confident carp and a few bites. So yeah, just baiting up the rigs ready for tonight. I put all my faith this session in the Pineapple Plus pop-ups. Part of the new uh, range of pop-ups, new and improved recipes. Double the flavour as well, so they smell for a lot longer. And yeah, a really nice uh, washed out sort of fluoro yellow, so not too bright, but bright enough to get uh, the attention of a carp that's swimming by. The reason for fishing a pop-up, and also a pineapple pop-up, um, we've got a lot of weed present, so using the pop-up in conjunction with a helicopter setup, um, bead slid right to the top, even if the rig does go in a bit of low line weed, the rig will slide up the leader, sit on top of any low line weed and present nicely on top. But yeah, the yellow pop-ups, the reason I went for them is just really to grab their attention. I'm fishing club mix ballies over the top, so this is the only yellow bait really in the swim. Um, I've been told previously they do like a bit of corn and maize, so something that replicates that colour and uh, something that will grab their attention as they swim past and feeding on the club mix. But yeah, it's been doing well this session for me. I haven't fished most of the day, I fished uh, for a few hours this morning. Um, Round in the swim, we was doing a bit of float fishing, rest in the swim because they aren't fish for loads in here. They are um, old estate lake carp and they do know what's going on. So I've given them a bit of free time to go about their business, have a bit of food, and uh, hopefully visit with the spots again tonight. But yeah, they're looking prime now. It's getting to that time of the evening where we started having bites last night. So um, we'll get this wrapped up, cast out, and hopefully it's not going to be long before we've got a lovely estate lake carp to show you. So as you can probably see, I'm using two different lines, um, a mono on the right and a fluoro on the middle. I had a little incident yesterday where I hooked a fish, the line rubbed against a snag and instantly cut off. So to prevent that happening in the future, um, I always carry spare spools of either mono or fluoro, depending on what one I'm using. So I put on, on the middle rod, 20 pound fluorocarbon. It's a lot more abrasion resistant, a lot thicker as well. So it doesn't pull into the snags as easily. And um, yeah, so far it's doing the trick. It's always handy to take more than one type of line if you're, if you're allowed to use um, different types of line, braid for example, uh, because they all offer different properties. So yeah, there's no line that really covers it all, but if you want to do good casting, mono is always the best bet. If you want something abrasion resistant and sink well, then fluoro is your best bet. And if you're allowed it, then braid is also very good. Um, the only thing you've got to watch out with is braid is you have got to plan a bit softer because with the mono and the fluoro, there is give and stretch in the line. So any lunges or anything, then that can absorb any um, lunges from the fish. Whereas the braid, where it is, there is no stretch. It's uh, direct contact with the fish. So if you do get caught out with your clutch too tight, you will end up pulling the hook out. So yeah, so. It's all a trial and error when it comes to um, first using braid. It does take a little while to get used to, but it is good stuff. But yeah, fluoro on the middle on the snag, 
mono on the right and uh, yeah, yeah, it has helped to land a few more fish so hopefully it continues to do so. Alright, so we're back in the swim now. I did go and revisit the spot I put bait in before going for lunch. Nothing happened there. So hopped back into my swim, tied up a few rigs, all ready to go, clipped up. We're gonna go have a nice little barbecue and hopefully we do have a few. I have seen one or two cruising around in the weed and I've seen actually one drop on the bait I put in this morning. So I'm very, very comfortable for the night. It's just a matter of time when we get the rods out. So the rigs are very, very simple. Two little blowbacks with the new secret wafters that Solo have brought out. I absolutely love them. They're perfect, perfect buoyancy, perfect size. Uh, I'll be fishing on a lovely old uh, gravel spot where I've seen fish actually feed on this morning where I put bait in and previous night I had a few bites of that. Then casting a little solid bag filled with crushed banana, tight towards the, the end of the snag over there by the island. And then one little wafter just right tucked up into the, the weed over a bit of club mix and some lovely salted maize, which I hope will bring us a bite tonight. So I'll give you guys a step how I done my bait for this weekend in advance I really apologize for the mess it's been a hectic night last night and wasn't in a swim all right so I've got a load of salty maize and tigers just all mix it in and then I've got some some of the club mix 15 mil crushed soaked in a new club mix glug and the M17 liquid. This is what I've been using for the last few months and I have been doing very, very well on it. And that's basically it, to be honest. Very simple, just crushed up boily, sweet corn, bit of tiger nut, M17 glug, and a new club mix glug. Mega bit of gear. Right, so I've got a little little trick I could show you guys that could help you save a bit of time making new rigs for different hook baits. So what you do is you tie a normal standard air rig, any loop, they don't matter the size, because what you do is to open up the hair, stick the bait floss on through the air. Oh, there we go. Ooh, struggling to get through the L and simple as that all you got to do is just put any hook bait so you don't have to change the air one of the little tricks that my mate showed me quite a while back that was a bosh get the floss out see where you want it so around there get the scissors get your lighter and just burn the floss. And that is a little trick where you can attach any hook bait without changing the air. So, just waited out my first rod, absolutely perfect. I'm gonna get the other two out and leave it, show you a few clips of that and next time I hopefully see you, will be a fish in the morning, ready to go. Nice little scaly, hopefully. just finishing my sour fishies watching a bit of film and I got the savagest drop back so I picked it up the fish was about 10 yards in front of me 
the speed that this fish has got for its age. It's ridiculous. Finally, one of the proper mirrors has turned up. God knows how old this thing is. It looks ancient. Absolutely buzzing. So yeah, this is what we came here for. I've seen many a pictures of these scaly little gems in this estate lake. And after six commons and a couple of losses, I didn't think I was gonna get my hands on one of the scaly residents. But yeah, look at that. Tiny little tail, big apple sized scales, perfect in every detail. Yeah, that's made the trip for me, definitely. What a place and what a fish. And we still got a night to go. Night turned into morning and the bites just kept on coming. The priming of the swims obviously worked because the fish were really having it now. Check these out. So, after all that action early morning, I've had a bite on the right hand rod, unfortunately it come off. Recast it straight to the same spot. Two, two uh, cap pots for the club mix. And uh, yeah, we've got this real old mirror. This is what we come to the estate lake for, these old mirrors and the old commons. It's absolutely littered with little starburst scales all along its flanks. And yeah, mega little carp, mega venue. But yeah, what a place. Check that out. Queen of the estate lake. Mega scaly one. Pucker condition as well. Yeah, and this is uh, just one of the scalies we had early hours of this morning. Funny really, because we had all commons uh, yesterday, well I did, um, and then one common and four mirrors today. So, yeah, what a change of events. Blown away. That's the other side. I don't know which side's better personally, but mega fish. All right, let's slip her back. So yeah, these are the last two for me. I might come round to get me out with the netting, because uh, it's a bit of a tricky job when they're covered in weeds, but he done a good job of netting two for me today. They're absolutely covered in a big ball of weed, but he managed to do, get the job done. But yeah, check them out. And that's us signing out. What a, what a trip, what a lake. And um, yeah, very special place and yeah, special trip. <laughs>